Okay. All right. So finally, <laughs> we got the angle of this. <laughs> Technology, we are, we are also trying to get used to it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes. Okay. So the first question is, sir, how did you start? What form of photography did you start with? And um, a, a little hint about ovation. You as an ovation photographer, and what was your big break? So that's our first question, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, Thank you, Jide Moraya, for You're welcome. allowing me to be on. You know, I'm highly honored to be here. Thank uh, you. Sir. To start with, uh, it's I, I will say photography. I started doing photography from the age of 18. Uh, when wow. I turned 18, some years ago, my elder sister gave me a camera. You know, the one one no long cameras. You know, and uh, being a shy person, I used that to hide behind the lens. And from then onward, you know, I started taking pictures, editing camera, I would do, you know. So that is how I started. But professionally, you know, it all started as a hobby. But professionally, uh, I, my first job was a christening. That would have been in 1988. Your first job was what? A child dedication. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. I can hear you. Uh, was a child dedication. You know, oh. a friend of mine asked me, because everybody, if you know me, you will see me with cameras in those days. And he just asked, uh, oh, Dario, do you do this thing professionally? And I just said, yes. You know? <laughs> So that was the first job I did. And, you know, the first money I'll be earning from that was uh, about 50 pounds, 1988. You know, 50 pounds. Wow. You know? That's a lot of money. And um, actually not, because the cost of production is still, when you look at the total cost of what I did, is a lot more than 50 pounds. But I just pick up that figure from head, you know. But having said that, that propelled me to so many things. Then people started seeing, you know, because of photography, if you walk from Lagos to Australia, you won't see any billboard advertising a photographer. It's mainly by word of mouth, you know. Oh, people started okay. calling, then it goes to a state whereby I wasn't feeling comfortable because this study photography initially, I wasn't feeling comfortable. Uh, I was becoming famous for what I do, but I just took a decision one time to say, no, I have to go to school to go and study this profession. If this is what I really wanted to do. And of course, that changed my life completely. And in the process, I now met uh, Daily Momodu, the publisher of uh, Ovation. Mm -hmm. And I would say Ovation was a lucky break because Ovation took me away from... Um, a local state to a global person, you know. So I will, I will gladly tell you, Ovation was my lucky break. And before I joined Ovation, it, it has always been a dream in those days, you know, to say, oh, I want to work for this magazine because it's all photographs. And you being a photographer, you want to be the best, just like being a lawyer, you want to work in the best law firm. An accountant wants to work in the best accounting firm. The banker wants to work in the best uh, bank. And that was what Ovation was then, you know. And uh, truly, we met at a wedding, which is another story on its own. Uh, people will read more of that in my, in my memoir in another four years when I turned 60, you know. We met at a wedding, and he just loved the way I conducted myself, the way I was working. And without him even knowing that, it has always been my dream to work with him. To work with and him. And <laughs> that changed me completely, you know? And I became the best in After Slice Bread to Basha on Daily Momodu. And I traveled the world. And uh, the rest they say is history. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I, I love that. 
it's good to know you started from somewhere. <laughs> no, 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 guys. You know, before before you build Nitel, I think the tallest building is Union Bank, or which building is it? It started from foundation. You know, and it is one of the sad stories in Nigeria. People don't tell their stories. You see people being rich, and mm -hmm. they just don't tell the younger ones, this is how I started. And the younger yes, ones just feel that, oh, so this guy just made money without nobody. You know, mm -hmm. I don't belong to that school of thought. I don't belong. I started with a 110 camera, graded it into an analog uh, single lens reflex camera, which is the 35, you know. Today is the list of the cameras, but Sony is coming on so strongly with the mega yeah. pixelation of the, uh, uh -huh. the cameras, which is competing with the medium format cameras. You know, so I've gone through all those processes. Through all the stages. Of, yeah, all the stages. No, down from the 80s up to where we are today. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Thank you very much for that, sir. So, um, so the bulk of what we're going to be talking about today is, uh, you know, when, when the first time I met you, the first thing you asked me when you were going was, Gide, Kilo, Bade, Kilo, Bade. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I've never thought about it before, you know. So a, a lot of photographers, we are always very, um, very passionate about shutter speed, ISO, you know, setting our cameras, buying a new camera, selling the old one, all those kind of stuff. And you made me realize that the camera is really nothing, right? It's, it's just a tool. What are, what, is, what, are, what are you earning? What, how is it feeding you? What you're doing? How does it feed you? What do you earn from it? So there's a question that I have here. And, um, you know, the, the, the theme of this, of this um, live, live show is um, Beyond the Lens. And I think we both we both came up with that uh, with that topic. So I, I want us to talk. I want us. I want you to talk about that. You know. So talk about um, what kilo body, kilo body. What that when you say kilo body, what do you mean? Then I want you to wrap it around okay. um, what has influenced your work the most. Yeah. And be, what beyond the lens inspires you. You are putting three questions into one, but I'll try as much <laughs> as possible to, to get to the kilo body um, In okay. life, the way I see life is not in Naira and Kobo or in dollars and cents, you know? Uh, I see life, I see myself as an ant, and in life you have the elephants. I live my life, the elephant still lives his life. And what we do not realize is, even though what the ant will eat in one, in one million years, we're not able to feed the elephant in one day. Right? But there is a process that without the hands, the elephant might not even be alive. So no matter how rich Dangote is, who knows Dangote? Do you know Dangote? Jide, I'm asking you a question now. If you see Dangote, can you point to Dangote? Yes. You can. How did yes. you know Dangote? How? How did you get to know him? Well, because he's everywhere that he's the richest man in Africa. Okay, he's the richest man in Africa. That's abstract. But if you see him, you'll be able to say, this is Dangote. But how do you know that that is Dangote? Uh... Well, okay. maybe I, 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 <laughs> I so I, I, I've seen him several times at events. But okay, I, I, I will help you. Is the yes. visuals, okay. is the visuals, the pictures that you've been seeing over and over and over again? Yes. yes, I can remember when I was right. young. I, the, you know I mean, it, it was on Forbes and everywhere. So, I mean, it's just, it's just the icon of person that we see that, okay, this person is rich. No, before being rich, you know, you can just be rich and people not knowing you. Do you know what I'm saying? But without yeah. the hand of you being a photographer, there is no way the elephant will be known. That is what I'm mm -hmm. trying to drive at. So mm -hmm. we all have our purpose in life. Personally, for me, my philosophy is I want to be successful in whatever I do. 
and okay. success is relative. Then again, success is not naira and kobo or dollars and cents or pounds and pence again. You know, so those are the things that drive to me. And that was what drove me to say, I need to go to school if this is really what I want to do in life. So by the time I went back to school and staying in school changed my life completely about photography. And that is one of the major challenges we are having in the country today. A lot of your generation, mm -hmm. according to Uncle Sumi Smart Go, calls themselves photographers. To him, they are camera boys because they don't even know they are left from right. Why? Mm. They go about with 35 mic cameras, which is the least of cameras. You have medium format, you have the flash format, you know, and you have the range finders camera, which I hardly see these days. Anybody using the range finders camera, you know. So, to me, what I wanted in life was I want to be successful. And in being successful, this is the only profession that I know. And I want to be the best out of it. And in making the best out of it, I have friends that we started school together from primary to secondary to tertiary. Lawyers, bankers, engineers, name it. They are all doing very well in their own profession. So then what stops me from not doing well in, in my own choosing profession as well? And that is what Kilo Bade because mm. when you don't know what is beyond the lens and you are just engrossed with the high SO, the chota, the aperture, then people will leave you behind. You just realize that by the time you are 40, you know, this is something I usually tell the younger ones. If you struggle to 40, you will struggle for the rest of your life. And I want someone to prove me wrong. It has not been written in any book. I haven't seen that in any book. If you struggle to 40, I'm repeating it mm. again, you will struggle for the rest of your life. I want people wow. to look at their family, immediate family, their uncles, their aunties, their cousins, and see the successful ones among them, and try as much as possible mm -hmm. to look back on when these people made their mark. And if we're coming to the creative industry, you just have to look at Sonia Ade, Ebenezer Obey. What song are they singing today? Nothing new. All the old songs, because that is the way biology has been designed. Otherwise, younger people like you will not be better in terms of creativity. So what the older people are benefiting from are just the residual knowledge and experience. If they put the two of us together today, you'll be more creative than me. Why? You are younger. Same mm -hmm. thing, your children, by the time they get to seven, eight, they are more creative than you, whether you like it, you can, you can admit. Yoruba people will say, oh, I can come on the family like you. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is what life is all about. But Kilo Bade, mm -hmm. <laughs> Kilo Bade Gongon is mm -hmm. three things I will advise. Three things. One okay. is education. Two is education. And three, is education. Without education, <laughs> you will continue to wander in abject poverty. Wow. A very good example is what is happening now, this COVID pandemic. Mm. Virtually every non-camera person or photographers that I know in quotes are suffering. Why? Because without a portrait today or another event tomorrow, you are dead. Mm. And that's what I've been pushing over the years. You know, by the time you go to school, you might think you don't have to take portraits. It's not going to courses. Say you go to one course, now it's like an accountant. So he wants to know cost accounting or how to buy finance books. That is just a fraction of what you'll be taught in the university for three or four years. Plus your professional exams that you do over the years. So you now go to one course and you come out to say, oh, I'm the photographer because I went to do this course for one week, two weeks, three weeks, or three months. It's a different ball game because in school, you will be taught the business part of it. How do you cost yourself? A mm. lot of people are working for their clients. If their camera should break down, they have no means of buying another camera. If they should have accident, that is the end of it. Mm. But you're not going to school 
there is no way in the world you will know the intricacies of, of, of all those things. So that is number one, kilobade. Number two, you can't be like everybody. If you are reading the same book like everybody, your thoughts will be the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to be different one way or the other. And that is, um, and you, you, you just have to be very creative because we live in a creative world. I mean, um, my book, which is Yoruba proverb. Yeah, you see that? Yes. That's I have, Yoruba proverb. It's okay, Victoria. I have the it's fucked up of sky. Yeah, that was the first edition. The first yeah, edition. I have but the first it's edition. I, I, you, you gave me that you know? one as a gift. <laughs> yes, that was six years ago. You know, in the history of Yoruba race, from the first book written by, yeah, great, great, yes. So <laughs> this is 2.0. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, from the first book written on the history of Yoruba race by, Reverend Samuel Johnson in 1848. Mm -hmm. Nobody since then has ever done anything like this. You know, where you have proverbs and pictures, you know? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it, it's not just about, oh, oh my shot, oh, look at the sky, is, you know? Oh, look at the highlight, mm -hmm, beautiful, look at the contrast. So. What has that got to do with me? So what have you come up with it? So <laughs> is it, the time for us? Yeah. <laughs> that is the whole essence of this, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you have contemporaries who might become bank managers tomorrow, who might become oil and gas chairman tomorrow, who can become a president, governors, or whatever. And you will still be logging your bag on your back and saying, oh, you are a photographer, you are this, you are that. It doesn't make any sense to me. Then not just that alone, what legacy are we leaving? Mm, at the end of the day, behind. you know, at the end of the day, we're all going to die. Because once you are born, you should know that you are going to die. Unfortunately, the black man doesn't think about death. <laughs> you know, we don't think we're going to be here forever. And that is why most of us behave. If we know that we're going to die, you know, it, 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 it will change our orientation, the way we behave, the way we do things. So Kilobade, in the essence there, you just have to know what you are doing. So for mm -hmm. me, it's education, 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 education. Wherever I go anywhere in the world, I make sure I buy two or three books on photography, aside from most other books that I will read. You need to read as well to open up your mind. Because if you don't read, no, reading is like traveling. The more you read, the more you know about what is going on around you and the rest of the world. Yes, the internet is there, social media is there, but you just don't go on social media because you take one picture today, boom. Ah, everybody clicking like, 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 mm -hmm. like, like, like. That like, I don't know whether your bank manager is happy with it or not, you know? <laughs> so you should have a body of work. If there is no body of work, you don't post. You can't just have one picture, two pictures, and think, oh, yes, ah, look at that. I've got seen something. Or Jido Dukoya just took the photograph of a bread. And you think, oh, I mean too, I can do bread now. You quickly went to bed and take, take the picture of the bread, and you're not sure enough. You know, you want to be Jido Dukoya. And guess what? I've been following you since when you were in the university, University of Lagos. You know, wow. all the pictures you've been taking. <laughs> so it's, it's, part, it's, it's part of the education as well. You need to know everybody. You mm -hmm. need to know everybody. They don't have to know you. Just like we have Corona now. Nobody was Corona, but we're all running away from it. So you need to know everybody in whatever mm -hmm. you are doing. But Kilobade Gongong is the bottom line. The bottom line is what do you want in life? What? Never be like anybody. In the years gone by, in the last 10, 15 years, a lot of people or a lot of women or ladies are trying to be like T.Y. Bello. Have they catch up? The answer is no. Because there's only one T.Y. Bello. 
A lot of people have tried to be like KBK and Madri. Have they cashed up? The answer is no. When you came out of university and you're doing your streets, going to West African states and stuff like that, you are just mm -hmm. GDO Dubai. You know? And you maintain your lane at GDO Dubai. And today you are GDO Dubai. And that's the way life should be. And we've not even started photography in Nigeria. That's the beauty. Wow. So the future is great. Hmm. The future so the future is, is great, great for Nigerian photographers. Education, education, education. Hmm. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Like you, 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 you captured the world. You captured the world. Like, and that's that's quite inspiring. So the the third question is. Um, I would I would try and link up the questions together so that uh, you can take it once. So one is how have you been able to build up your um, your top level kind of clientele? How have you been able to build them up over time and keep them? And then no, the, the second question is um, uh, okay. Can we know a little about licensing? Can we know a little about managing licensing for your content on such a national scale? Talking about the photos you took on the Naira note and the um, Nigerian national passport, the national passport. So licensing, you know, of the pictures, you know, on the Naira note and the and then the second question is um, like how did you how did you work yourself up onto that point? Okay, uh, thank you, Jide. Yeah. I will go back to the last thing I've just said. That is all about education, and that is part of Beyond the Lens. Because Beyond the Lens, you have a license to do, and if you haven't been to school, how do you know your rights? How do you know what you have to do? Then you need to get a lawyer mm. in copyright laws in the country very soon. I did one about a few years ago that we have to settle after of court. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. So, okay. So, like I said, I will repeat myself. The licensing boils down to education. With education, because there are a few things you can pick on the street. School is there to tell you this is what you have to do, you know. So you know technically you know what you have to do. That's what school tells you. But by the time you get into the University of Jankara, which is the University of Life, it's a different ball game entirely, you know. But in terms of licensing, you have to get a very good lawyer. And my advice is, it's better for you to do it on retainership, because if you don't do it on retainership, it might be very expensive for you for a lawyer just to pick up a case for you to do. Then two, you should know your onions. Once you know your onions, people will respect you. Because if you charge peanuts, it's okay for people to say, okay, I will use the job, we charge 100 Naira. So by that time you will say, I will come for 200 Naira. But when you are paying in millions, and they know you that, oh no, this is how much you charge then infringing on your copyrights, God knows how much it's going to cost them. Then, how, much, uh, how, do I, uh, how have I been able to hold to my clientele. clientele? Yes. Uh, that too boils down to your knowledge. Because like I said earlier on, if you walk from Lagos to Australia, you won't find any adverts, advertising a photographer. It's all by word of mouth. So, hi, the things that are important to us in life, we don't even see. The best thing in life, we don't see. And that is why we cannot feel love. You can't handle love. But it's the best thing that can happen to a human being. But the best of all is oxygen. Without oxygen, none of us will be here. So how do I do that? Before the advent of private jets, 
about 75 to 90 percent of my clients i made them on board that's a trade secret wow. i'm giving out to the rest of the world today i wow. only fly business of first class business of first class so you'll be shocked to see a photographer sitting next to you in that cabin you know but guess what before i go off that flight i get mm -hmm an average of one job. So that flight must have paid. No way I'll get my money. You know, but with age, you know, when you're young, there are so many things to do when you are young. And I could remember vividly there was a there was a day I flew with my Oga Bachelor Daily Momotu and it was just on my kids. I let people sleep. They are sleeping. You can't be doing I said no but do everybody knows you but nobody knows that I did that. Young. On that flight I got three jobs. Wow. So the whole idea is, you know, I used to do social photography before I stopped social photography completely. If I attend an event, the whole idea is for me to get four jobs out of those events. And I don't have an assistant. I don't work with any photo assistant. I do everything by myself. And my promise to my client was I will make sure that 90 percent of the people at that event are captured. It, it, it's peanuts. It's very easy to do. No matter how huge the event is, it's very easy for me to do. You know, it's in the brain. You just mm -hmm. you segment everything into about three places and you just walk around, pam, 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 then come back and concentrate on the uh, on the event people the celebrate, you know, and uh, celebrate, you know, and at the end of the day, when people see you the way you are working, you know, because it's my work. You know, I didn't have any other job. So what am I posting for? I didn't have to post to say, oh, this, that, that. No, 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 no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I will prostrate for you. It doesn't take anything out of me. Humility. And most importantly, your word should be your bond. Because people have paid you, no matter how little or no matter how expensive you think people think you are. They've paid you from their sweat and they are expecting something from you. Mm. So that name, Didio Dupoya, for example, is worth more than all the money in the central bank. Because what you've built over 30 years can go in five minutes if you are not careful. Mm -hmm. So for me, what makes me to hold them hold them tightly is I deliver their jobs on time much more than what they're expecting and not just that alone we become family friends mm. so today most of the people that I know are people that have worked for one way or the other we become friends and guess what another crazy secret is you should work men should work mainly with the women wives that's the crazy secret and I mean you should be paying for all these stress secrets of luckily <laughs> I don't do social photography anymore. <laughs> because the women knows women no disrespect, but women are vain. Mm. Once you can get the woman into your pocket, the husband is is yours. Same thing applies to ladies, to lady photographers too. All you need to do is to get the men in your pocket. One, you are getting your money, you are establishing a relationship. The one thing, one philosophy that I've carried all my life up to today to separate business from pleasure. No matter how good relationship is, never veer mm -hmm. from. People respect you for that. And it helps you more credit mm -hmm. because a lot of big people in this world and great, the greatest of them all that have done long years ago, thousands of years ago, were brought down by women or by sex generally. So irrespective, no matter how close you are to a client, always draw the line. The client is the client. And another thing that works for me is, if it is a wedding, I'll usually have that in my diary. If it's a bad day, I have it in a diary as well. In most cases, people are on love. You might be the only person 
that will say happy birthday, ma, happy birthday, sir, happy anniversary, or just send, just send something, a token, a flower, a card, and stuff like that. So what you want to do, you get someone's wedding, you want to get all their children, and even when those children are getting married. After tomorrow, I see our clients that call me to say, oh, Dio, you are the one that covered our wedding. I want you to cover our children's wedding as well. You know, so by so doing, you've got a family because customers are difficult to get. The competition is getting stiffer and mm -hmm. people are undercutting themselves. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to reduce your cost. Another philosophy of mine is the more expensive you are, the higher the price, the more clients you get. And wow. since wow, I've known wow, myself, wow. yes, once you know what you are doing, but don't produce the same thing that others are producing. That's the difference. Mm. I've always been a different person. If you all go say to Mr. Hay to produce your wedding books, and you want to charge higher than someone from another place, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, another trade secret is you must attend exhibitions anywhere in the world. Anywhere they're having a photographic exhibition. Say, Jido Dukada is into wedding pictures. I see no reason why you should miss Fotokina in Germany. I know the reason why you should make the wedding show in Vegas every year. Mm -hmm. The reason being that you will get new, you will see new ideas, new products, and not everybody will be able to afford to go to such places. And mm -hmm. you don't discuss your business ideas with other people because at the end of the day, you will see Coca-Cola and Pepsi uh, directors sitting down together to say, oh, we want to launch this product tomorrow. Ah, this product is good, that one is good. <laughs> You know, you keep your secret to yourself, you know, and that is the end because it costs you a lot of money, a lot of thinking, because most of it is actually thinking, not money. Money is actually absolutely irrelevant. It's more of thinking, you know, mm -hmm. and by so doing, because everybody wants the best thing. There are few people that are rich in our societies. And if you can take your business idea as a triangle, at the bottom of the triangle, at the base that pure people drinking pure water and mm -hmm. deep of the triangle they might not be more than 10 drinking bottled water from Switzerland in this Nigeria today we've seen out there and mm -hmm. a very good example of banks me and you we are not contributing one cobalt to the banks the people that are serving all the banks in Nigeria they are less than 1,000 so all the rest of us are just going there to withdraw money. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. They are not making money from you because it's not your 65 naira or your 10 kobo a lot that makes the 1 billion naira, I mean, the billions that they are declaring as profits. It is the big boys, the, the large organizations that are taking huge loans, huge facilities, you know, that are maintaining mm -hmm. them. Same thing applies in our work. We just have, it, it, it's very simple. If you have 10 clients a year, 10 clients a year is more than enough for you because what one of them will pay you on a day's job, you can't get it in all the jobs. Mm. You know, and you need to live the life as well. If mm. you don't live the life, you can't come to me looking tacky, smelly, with dreadlocks. Uh, sorry, I know you have a dreadlock. <laughs> I threw all over your body with your sack smelly and you want to cover my uh, my daughter or son's way. I won't give you the job. Absolutely impossible. But what about the clients coming to meet in your office, serving them champagne? Mm. You know, serving them champagne, having a, a big wall where they can look at previous jobs that you've done, portfolio, you know, they'll be blown mm. away. By the time you even open your mouth, they'll be telling themselves, ah, this one is expensive. And that is the way they will carry you by the time they commission you. And that is what I did. And one day, I just woke up one day, I said, I'm not doing it again. And I left it because uh, thank God I did. If not, this would have been very horrible for me today. Wow, wow, wow.
<laughs> so this is this is this this is quite inspiring. <laughs> I I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um that brings us to the next question. Um I, I think you've answered a bit of it. You've answered a bit of it, but um you also I mean for sake of orders, I, I, I want to read it out so that you can I particularly tackle it. So photography seems to be a very saturated. Hello, sir, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. It's... Okay. Okay. I'm here. Okay. So photography seems to be a very saturated industry these days. Which areas do you think are still quite on top in terms of potential? Is that all? is that your question? Yes. Yeah. There is yes. nothing saturated about photography. There is nothing at all. Like I said before, we've not started. There's nothing not saturated started. about it. You know, nothing, nothing, nothing wow. at all. Because are you talking about eateries in Nigeria that are not saturated? Does that stop another mm -hmm. company coming into the market? Are you talking mm -hmm. about banks? New banks are still, you don't want to know the numbers of licenses that are with CBN. Uh, law firms, people are still studying law. If lawyers are still they won't go to school to study anymore. You know, wow. just like any other profession, what you need to do is to stand out. Today mm. in Nigeria, what people are doing as photography is what is called social photography. And mm. it can't take you anywhere. They are the poorest of the poor, no matter mm. how much you think you are charging. They're the poorest of the poor. You have documentaries, which mm -hmm. few people are doing at the moment, and they don't even know how to sell those images. And uh, I look at a lot of young people that say they are doing street photography. Okay, you've done your street photography, kilo body, and they will just mm -hmm. put blank. You know, they, they can't give you an answer to what they are doing. You know, <clears throat> there are so many things. Uh, I think today we need to organize something. Let me even give back. Yeah, this should give back. Let me, it's time to give back because we need to inspire your generation and the generations coming behind you. But in terms of other forms of photography, you have documentary, which is famous but they don't have a clue on how to sell. You have landscape that nobody knows. One guy is doing landscape, I think Salim or so, is doing landscape, just one person in Nigeria, doing landscape. Wow. You have area photography that nobody is into. You have food photography, you have still life, you have sports, and um, photojournalism has been left with the advent of our king, Today, Akindele, yeah, Akindele, yeah. Akile, Akindele, Akile, 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 yeah. who won world best photography? I mean, you know, some few years ago. So most of the newspapers abroad now believe that yes, our people can do a lot better than sending in the white guys into this place. I mean, I mean, I have a very good friend in Abuja as well. We shot for it as for Labi should they, you know. So that, that, that is a lot. And we're losing so many things that people are not even doing at all. Look at Tribal Max. How often do you see Tribal Max on people's faces? They are going. Look at our architecture. Look at Ikoi, for example. Most of those houses, colonial houses, are gone. Who is documenting them? Nobody. Now, thank God, my prayer is going to be answered very soon. My prayer is for oil <laughs> to become one dollar. So we can eat Nigeria, buy Nigeria, tour Nigeria. A country of over 200 million people, GD. Mm. If you have 20,000 customers, GD, you will be as rich as a millionaire abroad. And 20,000 after 200 million people is what? Next to nothing, but you can't have that 20 percent. I mean, that 20,000. Why? Because we are a poor country, it's only few people 
that are servicing, there are less than 500,000 that are servicing those 200 million people. And it, 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 that is why it is difficult when some people say, oh, oh let, the, let them go, they give us 10 billion, let that they don't give us this. By the time you divide 10 billion, 20 billion, they don't even have a clue of how much they're going to get out of that money. You know? And um, <laughs> coming straight to your question is, there are still lots and lots of opportunities in this environment uh, for us to make money from. Then, don't stay in Lagos. A lot of Lagos people believe they are the best in Nigeria. And if you score one over 37, it's even worse than fair. You have other 36, including Abuja, you can make your mark. Mm. There, are, there are several other things you can do outside Lagos. Because the Sultan of Sokoto and the Lake of Eko are first class kings. No matter how you say Sokoto is. And if you go to the United Nations, no matter how large Nigeria think they are or how big they are, President Buhari is not bigger than the President of the Republic of Benin. And the, I'm giving you another crazy secret. And the beauty of that is, for example, say you are based in Borono State and you are the best in Borono State. If the best in Lagos State is looking for anything, it will call upon the best in Borono State. And that doesn't stop you from coming to Lagos. And that doesn't mm -hmm. stop you from making whatever you want to make. Mm. And like I said earlier on, we shouldn't base ourselves and call ourselves elephants. Everybody no. I personally die, die, I believe I'm an ant. I have friends who have reached the pinnacle of their careers. And when we sit down together and talk, they all respect me. Why? I'm also at the pinnacle of my career. Mm -hmm. I'm not just Mr. Nobody. Do you know what I'm saying? You know? And there is nothing. Their bank balance might be bigger than mine. Though. But the things that we need in life, they have it, and I have it as well. And not just that alone. They've sent their children to the best schools in the world. I've done same as well with this cover cover business, you, you know, mm -hmm. to train two children abroad investing, you know. So for me, um, wherever we are in life, we just, just take it as that is our stay and make the best use of it. But rounding it up to the question you are talking about is there are several forms of photography that nobody has said to in Nigeria or they've not made anything out of it. But we need to organize a seminar where people will pay. I can't just throw everything like, out like that. Kilo body, you know, and uh, <laughs> the right amount, but just it. Mm, mm, mm. If you The network is breaking. But if you pay one billion, one billion dollars, the network is breaking. You will still believe in it so much because of what. Hello, sir. Hello. Okay, we lost him. We lost him there. I'm sure he will soon join us. Um, so we we lost him, guys. So it, it, it's it's going to be back soon. I hope we are we are all learning and enjoying uh, what what he's saying. And uh, so these are the words that uh, I heard a while back, and you know that really inspired um, inspired me. So. Uh, we lost him. I'm sure he will find the way. Hello, sir. Yeah, we are allowed to ask questions. Um, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, last, yeah. last question. Because I can see that the um, chat board, I don't think it's public. Oh, the chat is not public. No, I don't think so. But I sent my question to you privately anyway. Oh. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, okay, I think yeah. the phone is back. I think uh, okay. Uh, it's, it's now the chat is now public now, so you can ask your questions. Actually, guys, you can ask yeah. your questions. I have a couple uh, more questions to ask him. Mm. Uh, I have a couple yeah. more questions. Yeah, hello, sir. Hello, hello sir. Are you back? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Oh, okay. Okay, sir, you're back. Okay, yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Ah, uh, your the sound is the, the sound is not uh, is not. So can you increase your volume a bit? Hello, yes, everything is okay for me. Huh? Okay, good, good. Okay, good. We can hear you well now. Okay. Okay, good, good. So thank, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, for that back uh, to my yes. <laughs> thank you for those answers. It, it, as in we are learning, we are learning. So you're also, so you're, I, I'm also live on um, Instagram and uh, people can hear your voice. So some people are joining okay. us from there. Yes, yes. So guys, you can ask your question if you, I think the question, the the chat room is open now, so you can ask your question, guys, if you want to. Uh, uh, Mr. Gide? No, 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 you, 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 you can Mr. ask. Mr. Gide? Use the chat, the chat, the chat room. It's the chat room, right? Yeah, use the chat room. I have a question. Yeah, use the chat room. I will see a question from the chat room. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, okay good. So, sir, I have just a couple questions to go. Uh, so, sir, what is one financial advice that you would advise a photographer? One of the best financial advice that you can give any photographer. I think you're breaking up. No, I can hear you. I, I, I heard the question quite clearly. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good. Can you hear me? Hello, Jimmy. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, and I heard the question. Okay, sir. All right. Should I yes, answer? I yes, you can answer now. You can answer. Okay. All right. The audio is very faint, but don't worry. I'll manage. Yes. Yes. Financial advice. Right? Yes, financial advice to any photographer out there. And secondly, the camera that you have in your hand is just a tool. Mm. It, it's not the best tool for you to take the job, but you can improvise. So in terms of money, put that camera down. If you have to be a Libra, go and be a Libra. <laughs> because you have the time now for you to be whatever you want to be. It, it, it might sound so funny or ridiculous, but mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, it was part of what I told you guys earlier on. People don't write their stories in this country. If you know mm -hmm. where people are coming from, there will be more respect, there will be more values in the society. 
room wasn't built in a day. If your mm -hmm. equipment is going to cost you, example, 100 naira, if that is going to take you to drive Uber, taxi, work on a building site, or just do whatever you can do, but don't do anything that is against the law because there is something mm -hmm. that is called the law of karma, whether you like it or not. If it doesn't happen to you now, it will happen to you later. And in most mm -hmm. cases, when it happens to you, it will be served to you cold when you least expected it. That is when it will happen. So that is how karma works. So mm -hmm. whatever it takes for you to get that 100 naira, do it. Knowing fully well, you are doing it for a reason. It is not the end of life. Is the beginning of the story. So in another 20, 30 years time, when you two are telling your stories, because nothing changed as it was mm -hmm. in the beginning, so shall it be what we have heard. That is what is in the Bible. You know, nothing <laughs> has changed. Mm -hmm. okay. As it was so, in the beginning, so shall it be. You know, you just take your time and with luck, we, because there is nobody that hasn't got this one chance of luck in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. It might be in the process of what you are doing that someone will see you with the diligence of work that you are doing. Uh -uh, you shouldn't be here. Okay, why are you here? You know, God will not come from heaven. You will always mm -hmm. send someone. That person might just say, uh -huh, we, yeah, we are, okay, don't worry. How much do you need? Take this and that's it. But if you go to church or mosque and you go and fast and pray, you are just wasting your time because nothing is going to Life is not done like that. So you need to wake up, smell the coffee, go inside the kitchen, feel the hot, you know, how hot it is in the kitchen, smell the coffee. And by the time you get that finances, then the sky is the limit. Another way is through friends and families. But you don't get it through friends and families without sowing. You must have sowed not necessarily financially, into those people that will be giving it to you. Mm. It could be in terms of cross, character. You know, I told you earlier, on, you can build a name for 30 years. And in five years, I mean, in, in five minutes, what you built over 30 years will just fade away. But if you have been diligent all your life, be honest, be faithful, be sincere, and you persevere, there is no way you go and meet an uncle, an auntie, friends and say, ah, oh boy, this is this, this, and they will not be able to chip in here and there. But for you to start immediately without money, because the bank will not give you money anyway, because they don't believe in what you mm -hmm. do. So you need to get it funding from somewhere. So it's either you work mm -hmm. for it, or just from families and friends. Did you get that? Yes, I got, I got that. We got that. We got that. So there's, there's, there's a question here that I, that I want you to, to I mean, it, I, I don't know if you want to answer it, but it's quite, um, it's quite different. So uh, we know you've spent, your career has spanned over 30 years now, and you're still very strong. You're still actively working. You're still actively, you know, producing books, you know, doing, the, making books, you know, by the day. And, you know, so, and I know that you've, you haven't gone through all these years, you, you've learned quite a lot. So can you, can we learn from two of your mistakes that you've learned, that you've made over the years? Just two of it, two, two mistakes that we can learn from over the years. Can you hear me, sir? Hello, sir, can you hear me? Ah, we, we can't hear you. Uh, you you're breaking up. Uh, can you hear us? Hello, sir, can you hear me? Hello, sir.
Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Okay, yeah, we can hear you now, sir. Okay. okay. We, can right. we can hear you now. I've changed my position. Oh, okay, you changed your internet. Yeah, yeah, I've changed my, I've changed my internet. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Hello? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. We can hear you. So did you hear my question, sir? Okay, question is. Ah, it's still it's still breaking up. But the network is still breaking up. What about now? Ah, okay. It's perfect. breaking up. No, no, it's good it's now. Perfect. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Perfect. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Two of the mistakes that you can learn from. Yes, over the years. <laughs> over the years. One was the, the, my first mistake in 1990, 1993 or 94. Wow. It's part of the kilobadi. I took okay. a family portrait and I charged them X amount in pounds. You know, they're very, I mean, Everybody knows them in Nigeria, you know. So the guy now begged for a discount, and I gave him fifty percent discount. Okay. And he said that he was very stupid. I'm not giving you fifty percent. I'm taking eighty percent off. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So the guy said he's going to take eighty percent off because uh, there is no way I would have given him 50% <laughs> that the job cost next to nothing. It paid me big time. Since then, if I want to give you any discount, you have to beg me for 5%. Because what I would do is to give you one or 2% <laughs> like And I will frustrate, I will cry, I will do everything in the world. That is part of what you learn in the University of Jankara, the University of Life. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Yes, I can hear you. The second one is, I'm, I'm sure you two would have experienced it by now, the client that begged you the most mm -hmm. turn out to be the most horrible. Yes. You tell the yes. client you are charging 10 naira and they will beg. And at the end of the day, they will just mess you up. But the ones that you told 10 naira and it's okay, give me your account number or take the check. They are the best customers. So I've learned not to give people discount. Whatever I'm doing, cost, if you don't want to pay, I'll get hmm. So we didn't, we didn't hear the last part. So those we are the details I will tell you. So we didn't hear your last sentence. I didn't? The line was breaking then. We didn't hear your last sentence. Oh my God. I've got three internet connection in this house and all the three seems to be messing up at the same time. Um, okay. I, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay, good. We can hear you now. We can hear you. Okay, I've changed to another high SP. Okay, where I said worse, the clients that begged you the most for discount are mm -hmm. the most horrible to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I've learned up to tomorrow, if you beg me, uh, don't, I can't be bothered. That is my price. I don't change. Is that coming to ShopRite or Kingsway? That is it. It's either you pay or you don't. And I walk away. Because wow. there is no uh, empathy in business. Yes, I'll give you another experience. This job cost me 75,000 pounds in 2004. This was for a law wow. firm in Nigeria. You know, they paid upfront because I've done some work with them before, so they don't have any problems with me doing the job. Then when I came back with the job, top law firm, come and see errors that I don't see because I, I don't pay 
uh, attention to details, you know. Once the job is done, I'm looking at the graphics. I'm not looking at text and stuff like that. And they rejected me. And they said I have to, this was 2004, yes. I have to print another job, 75,000 pounds, you know. And uh, wow. I begged, I cried, story. They didn't send me up. I have to go and do the job. But at the end of the day, they managed one way or the other to just pay me the money because I've been very good to them. I'm like a brother to them, you know. So wow. from then onwards, I just got someone who just have to look at everything I do. I've really done my part do. because what I try to do is I just do my own and I believe in that, oh, everything is okay. But henceforth, I just do my own. Then another thing that people need to look to, uh, I will go back to your the question before this. Everybody wants to be a photographer. In our days, there are studios. And I don't think there is anywhere in Nigeria today, most especially in Lagos, where you will just take your raw picture, give it to the studio for them to process and give you a finished product. Is there anything like that, Jide? You should know. Um, well, because there's no film again, I'm not sure there is any, any place like that. So that is part of opportunities. Because photographers don't make money sitting down by their computer to be using Photoshop, Lightroom, or whatever. They make money from taking pictures. Abroad, mm -hmm. you take your picture, it's another person that will do the process for you. They know your work, they know what you want. They know the way you work, or you tell them what you want. And that's mm -hmm. it, that goes off. I'm sure if someone should start that today, but everything, talk about licensing so you don't want to give your raw files to someone and just before you walk out of the of his office your work is all over the world you know so you see where values values trust and confidentiality comes in so there is a lot we've not started today we've not started but this is not the best place to discuss that wow wow thank you so much sir. so there's a question from someone in the in the group now um, so the person okay. says that. Oh, so the person says that. Um, what is one thing you've learned in your career that you wish you you had known earlier on, and how might it have changed the Dio or the Dio brand? Uh, it's education. Okay. I've wasted some years to go and study something and, you know, if I've gone to school at the age of 18 to study photography at the age of 18, I would have been a different person today. So education is key. That's the only thing that I really missed. Mm. Yeah, I started late. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so I'm sure the person can hear you. Um, so there's another question here. Okay, so someone is asking, where can we, can you recommend a place where we can get your books? So I think his books are in, on Amazon. His books are on Amazon. So if you want to get his books, you can get them from Amazon. And I, I also think you have them somewhere around in Nigeria here. Yeah, you can get it from Coincidence, Terra. The book place in Ibadan, uh, and we are arranging with a gallery now. If you are outside the country, you can get them on Amazon. And two are joining very soon. This one I don't reprint. So, okay. That are probably so far. I think I've only got four left. All the other ones sold out. Wow. 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 So you can check Amazon, guys. <laughs> if you want to get his book, I'm sure you should be able to. No, you go on our website. You go on diary.com. You can buy it directly from. You can buy it directly from diary.com. But I don't want to. I don't ask for the job because they're doing sir. a wonderful job out there. Oh, you are, you are breaking up a bit, sir. You are breaking up a bit. Hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, you, 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 were, you, 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 there were some parts we didn't hear well. There were some parts we couldn't hear well. Hello, sir, can you hear me? Hello, sir, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, sir? Okay, I'm sure it's going to reconnect again with us. So guys, if you have your, if you have your questions, you can, you can start asking them. Ask your question, it's here to answer it, answer them. Um, I, I personally have just one question, one last question for him to go before we go. Um, so, uh, Olawe, I'm waiting for your question. Okay, so a couple of questions here, but uh, we'll just wait for him to come before we can. I hope we're having a nice time, guys. Sorry about the network. I think I think the whole world is online now, so the bandwidth is really really low. Um, it's not back yet. It's not back yet. Uh, so I'm sure he will soon join us. Uh, So I would also try and save this um, this our conversation so that we can have it after now and listen to it. Can you all hear me? Okay, hello, sir. Uh, let me try and unmute him. <coughs> hello, sir, can you hear me? We can't hear your voice, sir. We can't hear your voice. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello, Jide. I can hear you now. Aha, good, 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 good. You're welcome back. <laughs> okay, so I'll, yeah. I'll just speak to the phone. Okay, okay. I think the network on the phone is better now. So someone is asking, as an independent documentary photographer... Yeah, it's better. As an, okay, so someone is yeah. asking, as an independent documentary photographer, how do you break restrictions? So I'm, I'm sure this person is asking based on how you've been able to go to some of these places a lot of people cannot go to, the caves, the other palace, the, uh, the government houses that we see in your books. How have you been able to break these restrictions? Uh you will need permission. Nigeria is the most difficult place to photograph in the world. Even to photograph your house <laughs> at times might be very difficult. <laughs> so you need permission for everything. Um, you need permission from the state and from the federal and local governments. And if you are doing helicopter, you need permission from the state, from NC, uh, NC, NCAA and relevant agencies and DSS as well. You know, um, but once you get your permission, you're okay to go. You're okay to go. 
but you need permission oh. to go anywhere. You can't just bring out your camera and say you want to photograph Nigeria. It's the most horrible things that uh, that is happening to us in Nigeria, and that is why Nigeria is not being sold with government not even knowing. And this was something I took up with uh, Senator Ben Bruce when he was in the house. Of course, he didn't sit up one day to say anything about it. But he can go into the papers and write common sense. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really sad. It's very sad. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one, one, one more question here. Um, so, someone says, as a documentary photographer, how do you sell your product? How do you sell your work? Any insight on how you can sell your work? You know, I know you, you make books, you also sell your pictures in print. What are the ideas they can, um, we can tap into? Um, okay. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Sending your work is not a problem. You know, first, you need to make the name. You know, that is very key. And that was why I said, your name is worth more than all the money in the city, Central Bank of Nigeria. Because your name can take you to places, places you will never imagine in your life. And um, once the people that know will always know where to go to. That is just the truth. It's like going abroad now. You don't even know where the photographers are. You don't know the studio they use. But you that requires those images, you know the people to talk to, to get those things. So it's not pure water that you see all over the place. And uh, most importantly, most importantly is we should try as a documentary photographer, you should try as much as possible to have them in print. The reason being that anything will happen, you know, and uh, you can lose, you, all your files can just go like that. But once to have it in print, it takes you on another level not just locally, but internationally. You won't know where those work will go to. And you won't believe the kind of people that will be calling you to make inquiries on things that you yourself don't know. But of course, you have to improvise. And another business secret is, they don't come to you to say, oh, can you do this? And you say, no, I can't. You say, yes, you can do it because they won't tell you to do it immediately. Then you quickly go and learn how to do it. Or you go and source for it. You know, and mm -hmm. people will respect you for it because when you mm -hmm. tell someone, oh, you can, that person can tell another, oh, no, don't go to him, he doesn't. And another thing could have come to you that you don't know, that you can mm -hmm. do easily. So selling your work is, is a piece of cake. The most important thing is to make a name. Once you, I mean, you can't mention George Oshodi now, and you won't know the work that George Oshodi does, you know. He doesn't do your wedding social photography. But it's into his documentary. And those that knows what they want will go to Judge Oshodi for his work. And that's the way it is. Very easy. But not mm -hmm. a lot of people know that I did that. So we should go by me. <laughs> so everybody knows you. <laughs> so okay, so another question here. What is the best decision you have taken so far in photography? What is the best decision you have taken so far in photography? Best picture is relative. I would say the picture I took yesterday. You know, and the first time I'll be doing such. You know, uh, no, 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 no. I said and, the best uh, vision. If you say the best word that has given me money, that is very easy. But the best, oh, the best decision. Oh, I thought you said the best yeah. picture. Oh, the best no, decision I've ever taken in my life. Yes. Oh, that's very easy now. The best decision was to say, I want to go to the else. That today. That you want to do what? The best decision I took was when I decided to go to school. Oh, to school of photography. Go and study photography. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So you you were you were also trying to say something about the last picture you took yesterday. Yes, that was the best and decision. That, the in the absence of that, 
I won't be where I am today. I won't be where I am today. Uh, the, li the line is still breaking somehow. So the line is still breaking. No, I thought you said the best picture. 100 years when I'm supposed to have come to dust. Sorry, we didn't get that. Sorry, sir, we didn't get that. No, I'm hearing you clearly. Okay, okay. Okay. Let me leave where I am and leave you open. Yes, it's, it, I think you, you're breaking up, sir. I want to go into the open. Okay. You're speaking up. Yes, I want to go outside the house since I'm missing my phone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I think it's we better. Can hear you. Yes. Okay. It's better. It's better. It's better. Okay. So, so you said something about taking a picture yesterday. Can we know about it? That was okay. the best picture you've ever taken. Yeah, it was taken yesterday morning. Uh, it's so unreal, you know. Uh, deals on grass. You know, we always walk past it. And I just say, oh, Dad, let me quickly do this. And it just goes with a proverb, you know, a little after more. You renew, you know, the, the house that was built with this picture, you know. Uh, oh. Once the deals come, the deals will, you know, will destroy everything away. You know, very beautiful. I've never seen it like that before. And I haven't seen it anywhere before, you know. Oh, okay. So I think so there's the, still a bit the, of creativity in you. Okay. <laughs> you said what? So we, we didn't get exactly what you said you took. That what? I said we didn't get exactly what you said you took. No, it's a picture of, uh, you know, grass, grass, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Grass. Yes. It was a picture of deals on grass, you know, early in oh. the morning after rainfall, you know. Oh, deals okay, from okay, I see. When, you know, like today, I know you said the sun is really high. If it rains today now, certainly there will be deals tomorrow. You know, on top of grass, you know, very beautiful and surreal. Very, very nice. Oh, so you took a picture of it? Yes, yes. And now I asked it. Okay, that's, that's really good. So I have another question here. Um, Go on. Okay, so has there ever been any point you have had to negotiate a deal but wasn't? Uh, uh, the question is not really clear. So I think what the, what the person is trying to say is, um, is, is there any way you negotiated a deal but working for a payment in cash? Uh, that what? The question is not clear. The question is not clear. So we'll go to another question. Okay. Uh, Okay, so someone said, um, can you talk on instances where your negotiation skills helped you the most? Uh, several times, started at two years, several, severally, severally. Okay. Severally. Oh, but, but for me, it, it's not much about money. You know, I don't want us to push to put too, emphasis, um, too much emphasis on money. Uh, once we start doing that, we tend to look focused. And that's one of the problems with this generation. They want to quickly make the money and walk away. But it's not like that mm -hmm. stuff. It's not. Mm -hmm. But there are several instances where, but, oh, okay, good man. And uh, I, I've done, I was commissioned for a job for 1.5 million, which I rejected, but I told them to keep it. But by the time the job is done, they should come and pay me what they think is right. But well, that is confidential. I won't say anything like that. 1.5 million or 1.5 billion, sir? Million. 
1.5 million. Oh, okay. M, M for mother. I, I saw you said million. I rejected it. <laughs> and five. Okay, okay so, so one I rejected it. Okay, okay. Because they're gonna, you're gonna get more after it's done. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello? Yeah, can, can you hear me? The, net, the network is breaking. Yeah. So, sir, uh, sir, there's one more last question, yeah, okay. and then we can round up. There's one more last okay. question, and you can you, we can round up. Um, so, the que so the question is, um, you have been in the photography industry for a while now. Uh, what's your advice for upcoming yeah. photographers? You know, um, and then what what how do you see how do you see the photography industry after? Uh, COVID-19. What do you think would happen after COVID-19? And how can we prepare for it? As Two questions in one. Yes. Huh? More like a random question. Really question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. I can see the network is really bad. So can you hear me? Uh, the network is really, really bad. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Hello? Okay, Jide, okay, all right. Yeah, so two questions. What will happen after COVID and the advice, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, I will be brief because of the network. Yeah, the network, this is the last one, sir. I think we've, we've had enough of you. COVID, yeah, after COVID, <laughs> after COVID is really going to be very bad. Very, very bad. And uh, this is the best time to start planning post-COVID. I, you can be inside your house without going anywhere by doing abstract shots. Start taking abstracts mm -hmm. that people can have on their walls. You can even sell internationally. Thank God for so many platforms where you can number one. Uh, but to expatiate on that, today we need to talk and organize a proper seminar where you need to show people what they can do in the comfort of their own, at their own time, without any stress, and they will make more money. Then, uh, advice is very simple. Mm. Free. Education. 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 Don't go about 35 mil and think you know anything. You know nothing. You know mm -hmm. nothing. With education, uh, you, you yourself will know within you that, oh my God, I've been fooling myself all along. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of this. I want to go for this course. Oh, 2,000 naira, 50,000 naira. The way I see it is this. If you, are busy, if you are busy as a photographer, will you have time to go and advertise for 20,000, 50,000 naira courses? I'm not saying anything, no, but the mm -hmm. way I see it is different. If you are busy as a photographer and you have a lot of work to do, a lot of commission jobs, will you have time to say you want to train people who come and pay 50,000 naira for one week, or you know how to do the studio? You will know how to do this. It doesn't cut it, and you will never learn anything because mm -hmm. those things are garbage in, garbage out. But if you have a proper education, proper education is all encompassing. What you want to know in still life, what you want to know in documentaries, what you want to know in the studio, what you want to know in landscape, everything. It is now, it will now be left for you to choose your path if it is landscape. If it is still life, mm -hmm. if it is whatever, if it is abstract that Uncle Sumi Smart called, used to do in the seventies before the water abstract even comes out, you'll mm -hmm. be shocked. You, you need to buy books, and you need to read books on photography, not how to, but books by photographers. 
Because when you buy books on how to do this, it's like buying books on how to have sex. You know, it, it doesn't work out that way. You know, but when you buy <laughs> books on when you buy books mm -hmm. on great photographers, what you are looking at are the technical details, how they did this, how they did that. You know, that that gives that inspire that inspires you to do more and to do better. You are not copying; no, is copying all the best. All the best. Uh, if you go to the graveyard, you will see a lot of great men. They've done all the best. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is just to play catch up, you know, and for you to survive. But we tell you, you be going from one place to the other. Happy to see you. I went to Makoko, and everybody's taking Makoko, Makoko, Makoko. Everybody knows what Makoko is. But have you ever been to the place where nobody has ever been to? That is what people want to see. And that mm. is what sells. Mm. 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 And that is the difference. That is what makes Dyer the Dyer. We all know how bad Nigeria is. We all know the bad leaders. We all know the bad politicians. But do we know the best of the country? Mm. The largest monument in the world, the largest monument in the world, is in Edo State. Nobody talks about it. Now imagine wow. you bringing that out for the rest of the world. I'm saying the world, 10 times greater than the Great Wall of China. Wow. Imagine you bringing that to the rest of the world, just like you are saying, wow. If there is no wow in your image, you just have that image. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> Yeah, that is, wow, that is beyond the lens. That is beyond the lens. So we need to change our orientation. We need to do things, even if we are covering wedding, cover the wedding like a journalist. Let it be a report having the group, the bridegroom hanging around, standing. Everybody has seen that. Do crazy things. I think that is done not for a while before I start. Do crazy things that people will hardly see, you know, like the bride and groom fighting over cake, rubbing it over each other at their wedding reception. People have never seen that before. Just do crazy things, and people will know you for crazy things because that is where the creativity comes in, and that is mm. where you make your money from. Not to the bride and groom to cut the cake, eh? so any idiot can do that. Our mobile phone is giving photographer <laughs> challenges. Wow. <laughs> you know, so GD, you need to work upon. A day uh, after COVID, we God save all of us. And Amen. after COVID, where we can, you know, where we can sit down together and, and exchange yes. ideas, you know, because the beauty is no matter how good you are, if you don't have people that take time after you, you are useless. Because I don't want yeah. all these things to go with me. You know, I need to let it out. You know, but guys, mm. you need to read. You need to read. That, there is no mm -hmm. two way around it. You need mm -hmm. to start buying books and read. Look at all the people. I don't know whether people know E.K. Udi in Nigeria, the portrait photographer. You need to go to uh, this place to go and buy his book. Coincidence, or you go to uh, what this place called on Awolawa Road. You know, mm -hmm. you need to buy books whenever you leave the country, even if it is written in French. Forget about the test. All you want to do. It's just to look at the image, look at the technicalities. And with that, you know, the sky is the limit. And that is the only thing that will make you to be better than the next person. Next yeah. to you. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We, we, we have learned a lot. Like, we have learned a lot. Although the network was breaking, coming in, going out, but I, 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 we, we learned a lot. Thank you so much. And thank you for your time. This is taking, taking you almost more than three three hours. Thank you so much. No, thank anything you. for you, Didi. Anything, anything. Thank you, <laughs> thank you anything so much for you. God bless right, you, my sir. brother. God, God, God bless you. Thank you. you. All a right. lot of people also say thank you God that they've you. learned a lot. They've learned a lot on the group and on Instagram. Um, so thank you, thank you so much, sir. I'm, I'm going to call you. Oh, yeah. All right, sir. I will just send okay, you. No, I will you. God bless you. All right, sir. Okay. God bless yes, you. Sir. Thank you. All right. Yes. Sir.
right. So thank you guys for thank you guys for saying although the network was really poor and uh, we, we 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 tried you know using it like that. So thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate everything. You know, I'm sure we all learned one or two things. And we, I will try as much as possible to bring out some of these points that you mentioned. I will bring it out in a um, in, in a text form so that we can all see and read it. Guys, guys, same time. That is easy. That is easy. I'm so sorry, guys. So um, I, I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them out in points so that we can have them and um, we can see them. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, so see you next week Friday again. Uh, the next the next Smoothie uh, Friday will be next week Friday. So see you guys. Thank you. Imani, <laughs> look Well done. Well done. Thank you for coming in. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Uh, Michael Koka, thank you. And then everybody on, on Zoom as well, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. I hope you all learned something new today. Paul Odigi, Ondubusi, um, Onyebuchi, uh, Latif, Ibrahim Dosu, thank you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so I will try and compile all these, all these messages and notes so that we can have them later. Thank you. So see you next week. And keep safe, please, guys. Keep safe. Keep safe. Don't go out. Uh, COVID-19 is real. You know. All right now. Thank you. Bye.